My name is Ken Rupar and I serve as one of the volunteer chaplains for the Chesterfield Police Department. It's my privilege to welcome you this morning to this moment of healing. In light of recent tragic events in several communities across this nation and around the world, many of which reflect strained relationships between law enforcement personnel and citizens, we come together this morning to take a few moments to pray for our community, those who protect us, and all who are in need. We will hear this morning from two leaders of our community, Dr. Joseph Casey, our county administrator, and Colonel Terry Dupuy, our chief of police. Following a musical selection by the pipes and drums, Chaplain Gerald Glenn will lead us in prayer. As we begin this day, let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, as we begin this day with this moment of healing, may all that we say and do bring honor to you and connect us more closely as a community of your sons and daughters, caring for each other. Amen. Good morning. I stand here before you as your new county administrator, but my prayer is that this is the last time I stand before you under such circumstances. We all gather every May for Police Memorial Week to pay our respects for those brave men and women across the country who have been killed in the line of duty. We are blessed that we've had no sheriff's office deaths in our office in over 100 years. But we are also rightfully reminded of the Chesterfield Police five officers killed in the line of duty since 1914. Now we gather together for five Dallas officers killed in a matter of minutes. With all the rightful emotions and anxiety being experienced by our local police and their families, they still approach every minute of every day trying to serve and protect. When I heard of the outpouring of support from citizens and the many that stopped by our precincts and headquarters to simply say, thank you for serving me, I know that good will triumph. I reflected this past week about my father's story about his father who served the NYPD. My grandfather worked the midnight shift most of his career and slept during the times when other fathers spend time with their children. He never talked about his work to his children, but none of that diminished my father's view that his father was a hero. We're all grateful for families at this time, so please keep these fallen officers in your prayers, and that the hero status they've earned from their children will never be forgotten. You shouldn't always measure someone's life by simply its length, but rather by its width. For those in law enforcement, once that badge is pinned on you, your life becomes instantly wider. May God and peace be with you always. I would like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy day to attend this memorial service, especially our law enforcement personnel from Chesterfield County, but also those in attendance from our partner jurisdictions. I share the following with all of our police recruits and their families when they graduate from their basic school. Although it was written a long time ago, it has always maintained its relevance. What is expected of a law enforcement officer? One may well wonder how any group of individuals could perform the tasks required of a policeman. The community expects police officers to have the wisdom of Solomon, the courage of David, the strength of Samson, the patience of Job, the leadership of Moses, the kindness of the Good Samaritan, the faith of Daniel, the tolerance of the carpenter of Nazareth, and finally, an intimate knowledge of every branch of the natural, biological, and social sciences. If they had all of these, they might be a good police officer. These words were written by August Volmer, 
a police chief over 80 years ago, and they still resound today as describing a community's expectations of their officers. We gather here today to recognize the sacrifice of all law enforcement officers throughout our country, especially the tragic and senseless murders of those in Dallas a short week ago. That shooting was not only an act of aggression towards law enforcement, it was a direct assault on the core foundation of our society. It was an attempt to divide our communities, to bring chaos, to intimidate our peacekeepers. It did not work. What it did do is strengthen our resolve and our commitment to working even harder to keeping our communities safe. Trying to make sense of such senseless acts is impossible. To let this act or those like them define us would be a tragedy. Times like these can serve to either divide us or can be used as a catalyst for hope, change, and unity. The outpouring of support from communities across our nation has been overwhelming. I don't recall ever having witnessed so many demonstrations of support and acts of kindness as I have in the last week alone. It is obvious that many have decided on hope, change, and unity. For all your acts of kindness, the law enforcement community says thank you. So what's next? Law enforcement will continue to serve and protect their communities. We will continue to protect the constitutional rights of all people. We will continue to engage our communities in conversation about their concerns and their fears, and we'll do everything it takes to comfort those who are scared. We will continue to carry out our sworn duties and responsibilities. We are here to stay and committed to doing the right thing. I'd like to share with you a police officer's prayer. After the prayer, please join me in a moment of silence. Let us pray. Lord, I ask for courage. Courage to face and conquer my fears. Courage to take me where others will not go. I ask for strength. Strength of body to protect others and strength of spirit to lead others. I ask for dedication. Dedication to my job to do it well. Dedication to my community to keep it safe. Give me, Lord, concern for, the other, for others who trust me and compassion for those who need me. And please, Lord, through it all, be at my side. Amen. Honor Guard.
Our Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior. We come this morning seeking your peace, your comfort, most of all, your healing. Your word promised that you would be with us even in our darkest of days. And for your holy presence, we are eternally grateful. We weep with those who weep and we mourn with those who mourn. God, we are thankful that our weeping may endure for a night, but our joy cometh in the morning. Lord, we need a unity and a peace that only you can give, the peace of God that passes all understanding. And Lord, most of all, please watch over and take care of those who sacrifice all to watch over and take care of us. We ask this in the name of our Savior. Let everyone say, Amen. Thank you for coming. May you enjoy your day and continue to work for healing wherever it is needed. And now I pray that the Lord will bless and protect you, that he will show you mercy and kindness, and may the Lord be good to you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.